All right, I have a commercial. Okay, I have a commercial. One of the questions I get asked the most, living in Ridgeland, South Carolina, Jasper County, if you ain't left here yet, and I say to them, no, I don't <laughs> want to leave here. I don't want us leaving here. I want to do things to bring us back to here and to keep people here. We should not be abandoning areas like Allendale. We should be working to build up areas right. like Allendale. Right. We can bring our Black Wall Streets back. Areas like this, 70% black. So when I see areas like Allendale, I'm not saying, oh Lord, I gotta get out of here. I'm saying, what can I do to get our people to come back here and to stay here? Mm. The resources at the federal level and the state level. So I'm not interested to my black people. If you are looking to come back south, like most of us are, 61% of us are already back in the south. And a lot of black Americans have roots in South Carolina especially those in New York City and Philadelphia, yeah. come back to communities like Allendale and help us build it up. Right. Come back to communities like Ridgeland, South Carolina, my hometown, yeah. Hampton, Orangeburg. We should not be giving up these towns and abandoning them. Let's bring the opportunities we want here. Because mm. the moment we leave, the illegal immigrants gonna come and buy up everything. These big corporations gonna buy up everything. And we won't have even a blade of grass to call our own. Dang. Not on my watch. Mm. That's right. it. Right. Not on my watch, nice. and I mean it. Gotcha. I'll, I'll die before that. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I mean every word of that. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Mm. <laughs> they just had a stop the violence rally. Mm. And gun violence. Look, it's a bullet hole through the sign almost. <laughs> Golly. It's, let me tell you something. The higher the poverty rate, the higher the rate of violence, That's the right. higher the rate of That's divorce, right. the higher the rate of drug use. Right. People want to act like it's not a correlation. And the longer people are in poverty, the higher those things are going to become. Right. I'm, the average crime rate in South Carolina is 5.3 to 6 percent. Mm. Okay? Mm. In America, it's 4.0 to 5 percent per 1,000. Wow. I'm sorry, 5.3 people to 5.6 per 1,000 in South Carolina. Sometimes it gets up to six. Mm. Wow. In America, it's like four per 1,000, sometimes up to five. Yeah. Allendale, do you know what the number? Do you want to guess the number? Um, Woo. Uh, Take a guess. Uh, per how many per? Per, per 1,000. Per 1,000. I'm gonna guess. Remember, average in America is four to five people per 1,000. Okay. In South Carolina, five to six per 1,000. Take a guess what it is for Allendale. Allendale. I'm gonna guess six. 44. God dang. Are you serious? Per 1,000. Has one of the highest crime rates in the United States of America. 44. For so violent crime, 61 per 1,000. This is not an indictment of people here in Allendale. It's an indictment. You see, people will say, we've got to do better. Okay, when people say the we, and the reason I hate when people say that, because they're usually talking about us as black right. people. Oh, we, we, we have done the best, and yeah. we, can, we keep doing the best. Right. The fact that we're still here is showing that we have done the best. We always should try to improve everyone. But when they say we've got to do better, what about the elected officials? And then when you go to the elected officials, they want to say, well, all politics is local. When I go to Clyburn and his people, they always say, well, that's, that's a state, that's a local thing. You don't get to absolve yourself of your responsibility. Clyburn has been the representative on the federal level for Allendale for 31 years. He is responsible as well. And when you say that, people say, well, you got to look at these white Republicans now. They control the state government. Okay, they're to blame too. But are black people voting for the Republicans like that? No, 86 to 93% of South Carolinians vote the, 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 the South Carolina Democratic Party gets 80, and the national, because we vote for our federal right. electors too, right. they get, the average black person is gonna vote for the Democratic Party 82 to 86%, and South Carolina, 93%. Mm. So you don't get to tell me to look to the Republicans right, right, when you're, right. while you're getting our vote. If you get our vote, you're gonna get our accountability as well. And right. when people say we've got to do better, make sure you include these elected officials, right. because when white people have problems, like right now they have the opioid crisis. 
Oh. And right now, they're getting all kinds of programs yeah. to give them houses mm -hmm. and cars and jobs mm -hmm. training and treatment. Yeah. But when the crack epidemic happened to black right. America uh -huh. that was brought to our communities, mm -hmm. like the heroin, they jail. told us, just say no. Oh, yeah. It's your fault. You right. do better. And they were throwing us in jail. Mm -hmm. my, problem, my point is, when other communities have issues, the federal government will shell out. They write a blank check. Yep. The illegal immigrants aren't Americans. But when they need housing, need the right now, sisters. in April 2021, the Washington Post said the Biden yeah. administration is spending $69 million a week Woo. Mm. to feed, clothe, house, educate, shelter just the children of illegal immigrants. Not all. $69 million a week. Afghani refugees, they are not Americans. The federal government is spending hundreds of billions of dollars by now, I'm sure, to feed, clothe, educate, house, job training for them. Mm. Why is it when the black community has an issue, we always want to say, we've got to do better, uh -huh. while other communities say to the government, you better do better. Right. Mm. Right. So, the right. solutions. And then poverty is everywhere. It's ridiculous. Exactly. It's ridiculous. The solution is for us to run for office. Mm -hmm. I, we should be doing in our communities all we can do. I love the Stop the Balance rallies. Mm -hmm. I love the mentoring programs, the food drives. Yeah. I love the activists who are in the streets mm -hmm. working to get our people, That's right. you know, to help educate our boys and girls. I love the neighborhood watches. All of those are things we should do. Okay. I've done a lot of those things. When I was a teacher, I was mentoring, okay? Mm. I was, you know, helping to donate to kids who were trying to get in programs and they needed money to pay whatever fee. Yeah. But I realized that the system was still there. I realized that one out of every 10 of my students coming back a college graduate and being successful while the other nine were still fighting poverty and still fighting wow. all sorts of issues that their parents were fighting and grandparents were fighting, I realized our kids weren't the issues. Even our parents weren't the issue. Of course you have some that make right. bad decisions. But we can't say because of your individual bad decision, that's why the system is messed up. No, the right. system is messed up because of centuries-long bad decisions that the federal government made against us. Mm. And we have to be the ones running for office to do right by us in that same government. Right. State level, local level, but federal, don't leave it out. Mm. State mm -hmm. level is very important. Mm -hmm. They say all politics is local. Mm -hmm. That's true to a great extent. But a lot of times, these politicians in the federal government, hmm. they love to say <laughs> all politics is local because they don't want you holding them accountable. Right. Mm. If all politics is local, then why does the big check go to the politicians in the federal government? All right. Clyburn right. is getting big checks. The ones who work for the federal government, they get, uh -huh. what, $10,000, $50,000 a year? Wow. Now, they get little perks. So my thing is, if all politics is local, then you don't need to be getting the big check. Give it to the local ones. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Pay them so that they could be full time officials working yeah, to solve the issue. Solve you don't get to say all politics is local while the local politicians get a penance and you are collecting millions of dollars and millions of connections. If all politics is local, then give them your big check and send it down to the local officials. <laughs> no, everyone has a responsibility. The, the county level, the municipal level, mm -hmm. the state level, federal level. And we need to hold them all accountable and we don't need to be big enough. We need to run for office to replace them right. because nice. the policies, bad policies are what got us in this condition. Mm -hmm. So good policies specifically for us, freedmen, black Americans who are descendants mm -hmm. of American slaves and emancipated people. Mm -hmm. right? Policies are gonna be what is going to specifically repair the damage that was done to us. And you don't need to be a genius <laughs> to run for office. If the people run for offices with geniuses, then why we got places looking like this? Yeah. Hello? Why Man. is black American That's wealth facts. going backwards? That's Man. Facts. We already got just $24,000 per household on That's average, facts. and it's going backwards to zero. Yeah. 20% of black American households have a negative net worth. Huh. So if these people were geniuses, explain to me then why Black America is in the predicament it is in. You right. don't have to be a genius to run for office. You just have to have the right heart, be willing to stand your ground on what's right, uh -huh. and be bold, and be unafraid to run for office, and you have to have the support. So if you aren't going to be the candidate, then you need to be the support system who is surrounding that candidate. Mm. That's right. the solution right there. It ain't nothing complicated about it, y'all. Mm. Right, can you give run us one for more office. thing? We, we could do as people, if those who aren't running, uh, one more thing, maybe we as people need to do in order to help, you know, join in and solve these issues as well. Well, whenever you run for office, first of all, 
I hate having to even say this, but running for office on a pro-black American agenda is not anti anyone. There has not been a single point in history where black Americans have stood up for our rights and we said, well, we want to oppress those other people. Never. When other groups no. don't stand up <laughs> for their rights, yeah, yeah, yeah. they always try to do something to hurt uh -huh. black Americans. We're the yes. only group that doesn't go after the rights and privileges of other groups, yeah. okay? Yeah, do but they don't want us to get to that point either, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. They won't want to push us to that point. Right, so right. if you are not the candidate and you need to seriously consider becoming one, then right now, you need to be trying to find others who become candidates. These guys from the street in every community, and I'm sure Hannah Allendale as well, <laughs> I don't know I don't know them personally, I'm not in Allendale all the time, uh -huh. but in every community, there are always black men who are very well respected in their community yes. on the street level, and the women respect them, the men respect them, the young kids idolize them, those men are the perfect politicians. They have that connection with people on the ground level. Mm. Talk to those people, try to get them to run for office. You always have those women who are like the mother of the block yeah. or the auntie yeah. of the block. <laughs> or if there's a young woman, mm -hmm. they're the big sister of the block who everybody knows to get you a check. Yeah. Yeah. They need to be running for office. Mm. Or maybe right. you are a person who was like me, kind of kept to themselves. I thought I was giving back just by teaching. I realized, well, you know what? I'm tired of seeing my people ran over. And I uh -huh. realized uh -huh. that until they do right by us, ain't no one in this nation ever gonna be treated gonna be right. right. Mm -hmm. Okay? Right. And this nation ever ain't gonna be right. Mm -hmm. And I stood up to run. They need, we need, those who run for others, right. people to make phone calls, people to knock on doors, right. people to donate. Sometimes they need people to keep them physically safe. Mm -hmm. We can't be shrinking violets. We can't have the candidate standing up for us, and then when that candidate needs us, we shrinking back because we scared. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of us are afraid of what will happen if we stand up, and that, that's crazy to me. I'm afraid of what's already happening. Uh, how about that? Why aren't we afraid of what's happening already? Yeah. <laughs> we aren't afraid of 20 million black babies being aborted, mainly because mm. our women are saying they can't afford to have it, mm. but they will love to have their child. We aren't afraid of that. And we mm. could have had 20 million additional black kids and they right. would have had 10 million kids. We aren't afraid of the fact that a lot of black women who have gotten an abortion said it's because they could not afford the child. That's mm. why mm. we aren't afraid of our wealth heading backwards. We aren't afraid that we're 15 to 20 percent of the population, oh, yeah. but we are 60% of the homeless and growing. Mm -hmm. We aren't afraid of the fact mm. that our communities, our mm. once majority black historic communities are being right. gentrified before our eyes. Mm -hmm. We aren't afraid of the fact that we start more new businesses than any other group, and yet our businesses close quicker than any other group. We yeah. aren't afraid of the fact that even a college educated, uh -huh. professional black man has less wealth than a white male high school dropout. We aren't afraid of that. Wow. We aren't afraid of that, wow. that a black woman who's college educated, a single mother of at least two children, still has less wealth than a white woman who's a high school dropout and single mother herself of four yeah. children. Like, yeah. why yeah. are we afraid of what's happening now? Yeah. They already barged yeah. into yeah. our doors yeah. killing us, yeah. okay? Yeah. We already have some of our people getting lynched. It may not look like the way it used to look, but the result is all the same. Mm -hmm. We are worried about them killing us in the streets, which does happen, but they're killing us politically. Yeah. Right. And why, why does that not scare us? Okay? Mm. It's always when we actually have stood up for ourselves systemically that mm. things get better for us. So if you're not the candidate, the first thing you need to do is ask yourself, why am I not the candidate? Why am I not the one running for office? Uh -huh. Why do what do I think I need to have some special skill set? Okay. Yes, communication is important. Okay. Learning to negotiate is important. Mm -hmm. Knowing to do your research is important. But you don't have to be perfect. Because again, look at the idiots in office right now. <laughs> America has always been a mess. It's a mess right now. Look at these idiots in Congress. Mm. Do, uh, are they perfect? Mm. They make mistakes. They don't do anything for us. And they walk around here like they're the cats beyond the bee's knees. <laughs> and while we're thinking you have to be some perfect genius, all you need to do is have the heart for your people, have your positive place to help the people. I am a reparationist. My main mm. policy is reparations. But I have other policies going to, but really reparations is going to help everyone. It's okay. only for freedmen, black right. Americans, right. but it's going to help everyone. Mm -hmm. However, I have policies in place to address other issues. Transportation. Right. A lot of people in rural communities have issues with transportation. Either they struggle to afford a car or they don't have one. They have to struggle to find a ride. Okay? Or they have to struggle to keep their car maintained. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. I have issues such as dealing with gun violence in safe communities, dealing with the fact that our schools are not equitably funded. A lot of people spend the little they have to send their kids to private schools, which aren't that much better than the public schools mm -hmm. often, or they're trying to homeschool their kids, making great sacrifices. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. I'm Look, I'm for us as Black Americans homeschooling our kids, mm -hmm. but everyone should live in a community where there's a high quality public school. Right. Yeah. I talk about one of the reasons, not all, but one of the reasons why there's such a big difference in the quality of schools uh -huh. is because you live in a community like Allendale, South Carolina, right. the ninth poorest county in America. Mm -hmm. Schools are funded by local tax revenue. So if you're in an area that's extremely poor, the, 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 the tax revenue you get back is gonna be very low. And the school can only do but so much. On the other hand, if you go just an hour, so many minutes away, you'll be in Bluffton, South Carolina, and Beaufort County, the richest county in South Carolina, and their tax revenue is this high. So they can do special programs like uh, engineering, like robotics. Yeah. They can do uh, pre-med. Yeah. But it's not just the courses, the networking is important. Yeah. If you're going to a good school in an area that's pretty wealthy, you get to network with the child of a lawyer, the child of a physicist, the child of a doctor, the child of a helicopter repairman. And you get to get opportunities just for your net worth alone. My plan addresses that. My plan addresses bringing industry to our area that's not going to run people out their communities that you're going to rise the tax rate up and that people can do without a college degree. I want, I believe everyone should be prepared mm -hmm. to go to be college ready. But I don't feel that college should be obligatory. Right. So I've looked into certain industries. One of them, they talk about you know, solar energy, but we ignore tidal energy. A lot of mm -hmm. this district, South, um, Allendale's not coastal, it's in what's called the outer coastal plain, but where I live in Jasper County, it's coastal. Uh -huh. South Carolina has this long coastline. We can do tidal energy, which uh -huh. simply gets energy generated from the rising and the lowering of the tides. Uh -huh. Man. Something that is always gonna happen. Uh -huh. Yeah. There are true now, true. thousands, <laughs> hundreds of thousands of jobs okay. that can be generated mm -hmm. in that field alone that mm -hmm. people could do without having to have a college degree. And instead of running people out their communities, that will allow people to stay in their communities. I have plans for making, first of all, I really don't agree uh -huh. with people having to pay income tax. Like, I don't get that. Like, the federal <laughs> government does not need taxes to, to come up with a budget. They don't. That's a myth yeah. they teach us so they can take money from us and so that they can say they can't do things for us. So I have a lot of things on my platform that addresses universal issues. But I'm always going to stand on addressing the main issue, and that's that my people, my demographic, my ethnic group, freemen, who are black Americans, descendants of American slaves, and those who were emancipated by America, have yet to get reparations, which this nation has done for other groups. Mm. Thanks. Oh. Man. Right. Awesome. Thank you so much, Marcel. Thank we appreciate wow. that, man. That, and and, and a lot of knowledge. needs our vote. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Everybody you know yes. what? He also yes. needs our uh, uh, support, monetary, support, monetary wise. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that's the main thing. Yeah. Word, uh -huh. of Word of mouth. Word of mouth is powerful. Right. You yeah. tell your cousin about me. They tell their cousin about me. Mm -hmm. Then that cousin tells a friend on her job about me. Right. Word of mouth is important. I don't have the money mm -hmm. to get my name out there on billboards. I mean, I've done billboards. Mm -hmm. I've done commercials, but your money will evaporate quickly. The main way is word of mouth. Mm. I work from seven to six, okay? All right. Teaching. All right. All right. From seven to three, then I have another teaching gig, and then I have another teaching gig. Mm. So right. me being able to go out and knock on doors, I yeah. do that in my spare time. Yeah. So I'm getting my phone call system up, but the most important, do you know what the biggest factor in influencing a person's vote? The biggest factor has been word, word of mouth. Of a mouth. family member saying, <laughs> you need to vote for this guy. Right. That yeah. has been shown to be the largest influencing factor for when a person goes to the polls. Yeah. And now, people, especially black people, we've been talked about, we tell people make us all these promises and get in office to do nothing. Yeah. And they say, well, how we know you're not gonna be any different? Well, first of all, you don't know if I'm not gonna be any different. I said, that's, that's another problem with us. We think, oh, I voted for them, they did nothing for me, that's your fault. If we put somebody in office and they don't do right by us, 
they better not be able to show their face around us. That's Hello. our fault Hello. for letting Hello. people get in office Hello. and ignore us. If I put you in office right. and you said you was going to do this, this, and this, right. and I see you ain't done this, this, and this, mm -hmm. you better not come in my neighborhood. Yeah. And if you do, I'm coming for you. Mm. Us as black people, though, Clyburn, all of them, he <laughs> is he, the first Bill Clyburn rope. When he got well, one of the first, he sponsored in 1993, was a bill reparations for the Catawba Native American. Mm -hmm. The bill literally wow. said to give those special privileges, rights, recognitions, and protection because mm -hmm. of the historical wrong. The Catawba Native Americans are a group of Native Americans on the South Carolina, North Carolina border who used to enslave our people. What? And not only were they enslavers, they made their profession hunting our people down if they escaped from the plantation. Damn. And Clyburn, the first thing he did was sign a, rep a sponsor a reparations bill for them. Has he, has he done that for us? No. Has he done it even for the Gullah Geechee? Man. My people. Our people. Most of us here have that lineage. No. Mm -hmm. So, don't let him tell you he can't do things specifically for us. You can't do it for race, but you can do it by status and lineage. Mm. Like you did with the Catawba Native American. The point I'm making is, but when Clyburn comes around here, people are almost falling at his feet. Most of us aren't. Most of us don't care. Most of us know he ain't done nothing the force. But the ones that show up, they're falling at his feet. That's our problem with black Americans. We got this celebrity mentality. We got to worship okay. a person we saw on TV. No, you don't mm -hmm. worship a politician. Right. The first thing you do with that politician is Janet Jackson. Ah. What have you done <laughs> for me lately? Right, that's, that's, exactly. that's the first thing you do when a politician <laughs> comes to your face. You, you, I do it to Janet Jackson. <laughs> what have you done for me lately? Yeah. And if they can't answer Janet Jackson, yeah. then you get on them. Mm. And don't let them lie to you and say, well, I've done it for this group, this group. No, I said, what have you done for me, specifically that's for me? Right. Mm -hmm. right. We have to stop being so damn cordial. Right. We have to stop being so damn docile. Mm -hmm. When Lindsey Graham goes in front of these white people, these white people say, why have you not gotten this done? When are you going to do this? You go in front of the black people and do a fish fry oh, and yeah. hit the fawn and yeah. do you on that beat. <laughs> and we just is happy, happy, happy. Do the Dougie. Yeah. Meanwhile, every yeah. other group's economic profile is getting higher and higher. Yeah. And we are almost being buried alive. Man. Mm -hmm. But we being docile and nice and sweet and loving and kind. Yeah. Yeah. And then when some of us show up and we call out these politicians, we want to get mad at that person call them out. Mm -hmm. No, you the jackass, and I'm mad at you for you not calling them out. Mm -hmm. right. So, right. we have to, mm -hmm. we have to mm -hmm. step our game up. That's something mm -hmm. all of us That's need right. to do. Yeah. Right. So if I run for office, and let's say I get in there, mm -hmm. and you see I haven't even tried. Mm -hmm. Now, a person might do or try to do what they said they were going to do for us, right. and it may not work out, but they're fighting. That's different. different. But a lot of times they're not even trying. Mm. Right. Your job is to make sure that I have the fear of God in me so that I am not going to go up there, do nothing for you, not even try, and just come back to you with excuses. Mm -hmm. We, yeah. that's our responsibility. It is nothing wrong with us making our elected officials afraid of us. I'm not saying violence. They're going to try to say, you see? He's yeah, putting yeah, you yeah. violence. Uh, by the way. Not what you're saying. By the way. Uh, uh, they, they, violence happens to us all the time. When you see us dying and you don't do anything about it, that's violence. Yeah. When you, Clyburn, can do things for all these other groups, illegal immigrants, Asian Americans, Catawba Native Americans used to enslave us, when you can do something for them, but you see your people getting brutalized and you do nothing about it, that is violence. That's the worst sort of violence. Political violence is the worst sort of violence. So I am saying, make them afraid of us in the sense that they know we're going to hold them accountable mm -hmm. and they know that they can't just come up in our face with a bunch of garbage smiling and mm -hmm. telling us sweet nothing. Mm. Now. Yeah. So real quick, yeah. uh, before we end this, because I think this is about to go out. What does it mean and how important is it to be on cold? Being on cold means... <laughs> What I asked, most of our ancestors did, not all. Mm -hmm. Everything. South Carolina, we should be proud of being South Carolinians. Mm -hmm. The only state in America, the only state in the US to have a majority black state legislator. The moment slavery ended, our people ran for office. And imagine, if we think anti blackness is bad now, imagine how it was in the 1860s. Mm. And yet, we ran, our people took over the state government, 
-hmm. And you know what's funny? They had every reason to be angry at white Americans. They mm -hmm. could have said, now we're going to come after y'all. They never did that. Never did but that. what they did say, this country is going to do right by us. Right. We know how, we're the only group that doesn't have a history of going after other groups. That's right. Also, Robert Smalls, Joseph Rainey, there were others. They ran for federal office. And Robert Smalls said in the 1860s, mm -hmm. remember, this is 1860 now. Okay. He was in the white people in the 1860s. He said, the Negro is here to stay. Uh -huh. He said, it is to your benefit that he gets what he is due. Mm. Okay? Mm. So mm. being on call means that every action you make is that freedmen, black Americans, get what we are owed. Every action you take should be towards that end. Mm. Mm. Simple as plain as that. Nice. <laughs> Man, we appreciate yes. you. Thank you all. This for has this been great. Time. Definitely. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, Thank and um, so whatever we could do, just let us know, man. We, you know what I'm saying? Always a support. That's right. Well, yeah. Telling your family, especially in Bamberg. Yeah, yeah. Because I tried to get to mm -hmm. Denmark Tech, okay. but you uh -huh. see, they all in Clyburn's pocket over there. Okay. Those are all HBCUs. Denmark. And not that they. Yeah. Well, I don't know. We don't have to be yeah, so yeah, right. Yeah. No, yeah. because.